Hey, let us talk about history again. This time, about the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. So, let's dive right into the story of the Roman Empire, which, by the way, officially began in 27 BC with Augustus Caesar. Even though people often think Julius Caesar was Rome's first emperor, that is not really the case. He was actually a dictator, a temporary role given to military leaders during emergencies in the Roman Republic. After Julius was assassinated, his nephew Augustus took over, becoming the first emperor by defeating Caesar's killers, and later met Antony and even Cleopatra at the Battle of Actium in 31 BC. Grateful for his defense of Rome, the Senate gave Augustus the title of emperor, which would continue from 27 BC until the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476 AD, and the Eastern Empire hung on until 1453 AD. Augustus inherited the conquest of earlier generals like Julius Caesar and Pompey, and used them as the foundation of his new empire. Now. On to Augustus' big reforms and the Pax Romana. Augustus wasn't just a conqueror, he also overhauled Roman laws, improved infrastructure and built roads, temples, public buildings, and parks. He set up a more efficient water distribution and sewage system, reformed the military, and established what's known as the Pax Romana, a period of relative peace and economic growth that lasted over 200 years from 27 BC all the way to 180 AD. Now, the Julio-Claudian dynasty, quite a family affair. Augustus king of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, which included the first five Roman emperors, which would be Augustus, Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius, and Nero, not a good one, ruling from 27 BC to 68 AD. These emperors were all either from Julius Caesar's family, the Julii, or the Claudii. Augustus adopted Tiberius, who became the next emperor, but didn't seem too interested in ruling, spending much of his time on the island of Capri. Tiberius was supposedly assassinated by his heir, Caligula, who had a mixed reputation. He started strong, but quickly became known for his cruelty. What a surprise! and strange behavior, like allegedly planning to make his horse a consul. Real thing to do? After Caligula's assassination, Claudius took over. And after his own assassination, you see a pattern there. Nero came to power. What a mistake. Nero famously rumored to have fiddled while Rome burned. Was the last of the Julio Claudians. Now, the chaos and the rise of the Flavian dynasty Nero's death left no clear hair, throwing Rome into the year of four emperors. Chaos with four different rulers vying for power. They would be Galba, Otto, Italius, and Vespasian. After some serious back and forth, and again a few assassinations, Vespasian emerged victorious, founding the Flavian dynasty, which ruled from 69 to 96 AD. Not really long. The Flavians, Vespasians, Titus, and Domitian oversaw economic reforms, building projects which include the famous Colosseum, a marvelous piece of architecture, and dealt with natural disasters like the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, very famous. The Italians as a nation in 96 AD led to the next phase of Roman history, a lot of fascinations going on there. The five good emperors. Rome's Golden Age. After Domitian, we had the so called Five Good Emperors Nerva, Trajan, Hadrian, Antonius, Pius, and of course, Marcus Aurelius, ruling from 96 to 180 AD. These guys were known for their stability, care for the people, impressive building projects, and military campaigns. Hadrian, for example, left his mark with, well, Adrian's war in Britain. Marcus Aurelius, a stoic philosopher, juggled defending the empire and reforming social programs. But things took a turn after his son, Commodus, whose, again, assassination, 
in 192 AD through Rome into another chaotic period. Who could have thought of that? The year of the Five Emperor. The Severan Dynasty and the crisis of the 3rd century. The Severan Dynasty took over after that mess, with a strong focus on military might. To pay the soldiers, they debased the currency by mixing precious metals with cheaper ones, which caused inflation later on. The Severans expanded Rome's borders and launched campaigns in far flung regions, but ended with Alexander Severus' assassination in 235 AD. Yet another one. This plunged Rome into the crisis of the 3rd century. A chaotic period marked by rapid changes in leadership and a temporary division of the empire into three parts. Emperor Aurelian eventually reunited the empire, with Diocletian stepping in later to introduce reforms. Diocletian's reforms and Constantine the Great. Diocletian realized the empire was far too vast for a single ruler, so he introduced the Tetrarchy, basically splitting the empire's responsibilities among four leaders, hence the name Tetrarchy. He also divided the empire into eastern and western regions, 285 AD, and set up a clear line of succession. After his death, however, a power struggle broke out between Constantine and Maxentius, ending with Constantine's victory at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge in 312 AD. Constantine later, known as Constantine the Great, credited his win to a vision of who had against Jesus Christ. In 313 AD, he issued the Edict of Milan, granting religious tolerance to Christians, and later laid the foundations of the Christian Church at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. After Constantine, things got messy again. His three sons fought each other for control, with Constantinus II finally taking lead but dying shortly after. Julian, his successor, tried to bring back the old pagan gods, but failed. His reforms were reversed by Theodosius I, who firmly established Christianity as the state religion. Hm. <laughs> I have no idea what could go wrong with that. Now, religion the rise of Christianity. Oh, right, that one. During the Republic, Roman religion revolved around the gods and stories like those of Romulus and Amos. As the Emperor grew, it adopted many gods from the Greek pantheon. Good thing to do. This religion was a kind of deal. People worshipped the gods, and the gods were taken to Rome. But Christianity challenged this system, of course, with the belief there is only one god who tolerates no rivals. By the time of Theodosius I, Christianity had become the official state religion, and pagan practices were outlawed. Now, the decline and fall of the Western Roman Empire. Historians still debate the causes of Roman's decline, but many factors played a role, that's for sure. From political instability and economic troubles to external invasions. So, as the Goths and Huns crossed Roman borders, the Western Empire struggled to defend itself. After a series of defeats, the last Roman Emperor, Romulus Augustulus, was deposed in 476 AD, marking the end of the Western Roman Empire. However, the Eastern Roman Empire, which became later known as the Byzantine Empire, carried on until it fell to the Ottoman Turks in 1453 AD. And lastly, we have the legacy of the Roman Empire. Although the Roman Empire and West fell in 476 AD, its legacy still impacts us today with Roman law, culture, literature, and of course the concept of a republic have shaped modern governments, including the democratic systems. And, of course, the empire may be gone, but its influence is still very much alive. <laughs>